The intent of this video is to review characteristics, features, and plan usage of the World War II German liquid-fueled supersonic ground-to-air Typhoon rocket. The rocket was to replace German ground artillery heavy flat guns. Germany was constantly modifying weapons and tactics to defeat Allied bombers. We've discussed many of these weapon systems in the channel's previous videos. The Reich spent monies, energy, and resources in the development of missiles to assist in the war effort. This chart lists the status of various 20 German rocket and missile programs under development from a declassified 1945 U.S. Technical Industrial Intelligence Committee document titled German High-Speed Airplanes and Design Developments as of February 1945. The V-1 and V-2 programs were completed and in production. These seven missiles were in priority development. The Typhoon is on the top of the list. The missiles are all unguided. These four projects are to be closed out at the end of their development period. These seven projects were to be closed out immediately. A little more insight with regard to surface-to-air missile development priorities is given on this page from a 1946 intelligence supplement document. In early 1943, all scientific efforts were focused on the development of a guided anti-bomber rocket. In February 1945, these complex programs were terminated and an all-out effort was shifted to unguided rockets like the Typhoon. The shift to simpler, cheaper, smaller, less complex, unguided anti-bomber rockets was due to manpower and material shortages, ironically caused by the bomber raids. A description of the Typhoon rocket is shown on this table from a 1946 Armaments Design Department technical report titled, German non-guided flak rocket Typhoon. The rocket is liquid-fueled and called the Typhoon. It is described as a small, unguided, fin-stabilized anti-aircraft rocket. It is slow-rotating and fueled by a bi-liquid propellant with a high burn velocity. The rocket's weight equated to 46 pounds and was triggered by a contact fuse. It has a 1.1-pound explosive-filled warhead. It can attain an altitude of 9 miles. At the end of its burn, its speed equated to 3,000 feet per second, or Mach 2.7. It was ripple-fired from racks fitted to the 88mm caliber flat gun base. The Typhoon's cost equated to 25 marks. This image shows a Typhoon launch rack fitted to an 88mm caliber flat gun base. The rack holds 30 Typhoon rockets. Characteristics and performance of the rocket are listed on this table. Overall length is 75.5 inches with a motor diameter of 3.95 inches. The rocket's thrust equated to 1,410 pounds. The propulsive fuel burn time is 2.5 seconds. Additional characteristics are the liquid fuel weight equated to 23.8 pounds. Launching acceleration is 1,250 feet per second squared or 39 Gs. This chart shows a cutaway of the rocket. The fuse is triggered by impact to the bomber skin. No delayed penetration detonation. The warhead equated to 1.1 pounds of an explosive fill. The Germans estimated it took around 1 pound of an explosive fill to destroy a heavy bomber. The bomber damage is due to the explosive blast, not fragmentation. A self-destruct device will detonate the rocket's warhead if it does not contact the target. A liquid-fueled rocket has many advantages and some disadvantages over a solid-fueled rocket. One big disadvantage is that a liquid propellant system is far more complex. This image shows a cutaway of the components of both a solid and liquid-fueled rocket. A liquid-fueled rocket needs a system to drive the fuels from their tanks into the combustion chamber. This could be a pump, or like the Typhoon rocket, they use byproduct gases from a chemical reactor. Action. The Typhoon's propellants are injected into the combustion chamber by gases from a burning solid cordite slug. The propellants enter the combustion chamber at pressures between 900 and 1800 psi. The cordite is electronically ignited. The cordite's burning gas pressure of 2250 psi will break the propellant tank's forward end seal burster disc. The burster disc is shaded here in this view and this view. The cordite cartridge weighs 1.1 pounds. The burning cordite gases will enter both fuel tanks. The biliquid fuel tanks occupy this part of the rocket. Couple thoughts on the Typhoon's clever biliquid propulsive system. The thrust attains its full 1,410 pound value instantaneously. This accelerates the rocket quickly where air loads applied to the stabilizing fin become effective rapidly. This will minimize the rocket's dispersion errors. No solid rocket end of burn trajectory errors encountered. Since the burn time is a rapid 2.5 seconds, no rocket body thermal distortion is present. More uniform thrust from a liquid rocket system. The dispersion 
version for a small number of rockets tested was an area of 1 foot by 1.5 feet at a range of 100 meters. Fuel storage is a tank within a tank. The inner fuel tank houses the oxidant, which consists of 1.3 gallons of a fuming nitric acid. The outer tank contains 0.76 gallons of a Vissol hydrocarbon fuel, and the outer tank completely envelopes the inner tank. The tank's pressure head will fail the aft burster disc, allowing the fuels in the correct proportions to flow into the combustion chamber. The beauty of this tank-in-a-tank -tank storage system is that the tank's boundary wall would not experience much pressure differential as the outer tank's inner wall is the inner tank's outer wall. The outer tank's outer wall is both the pressure boundary and the rocket's air wetted surface. This made for a lightweight design. The propellants are hypergolic, meaning they will self-ignite when mixed in the combustion chamber. No complex igniter system is needed. The four stabilizing fins are fitted to the body with an angle of incidence of 0.6 degrees to provide a rocket spin stabilized flight of 12 revolutions per second. This will reduce dispersion caused by manufacturing errors. The rocket's launch rails were spiraled to start a rocket launch rotation of 6 degrees per second. The rocket accuracy was deemed to be outstanding. Also, the rockets were fast. The time of flight for a Typhoon rocket to attain a distance of 6 miles was 14 seconds, as compared to 28 seconds for an 88mm caliber flat cannon projectile. The rocket's dispersion was so low that rockets' launching rails needed to be splayed in order to achieve optimum impact spread pattern. Production of the rocket started in January of 1945, and 600 of the 10,000 order were manufactured by the end of hostilities. The plan was to have 400 batteries in operation, where each battery contained 12 projectors, by September 1945. Each projector would be mounted on an 88mm caliber flat gun base, and each projector mounted 30 rockets. Changeover from flat cannon barrel to a rocket projector took a day. The manufacturing of the rocket projectors was shifted between three companies. Post-war, both the U.S. and Russians copied the fundamental design of the Typhoon. This page from a 1957 Redstone Arsenal document titled Loki Anti-Aircraft Free Flight Rocket outlines the transition from the German Typhoon rocket to the U.S. Loki rocket. U.S. anti-aircraft weapons in 1946 lacked needed flexibility, speed, and range to combat the new generation of aircraft. During World War II, the Germans put great effort into developments of liquid-fueled, unguided, anti-aircraft rockets. These type of weapons covered the gap between flat guns and guided missiles. A German engineer who helped develop the Typhoon was brought over to the U.S. under Operation Paperclip. The Germans were set up to mass produce a Typhoon rocket, but the war ended. Some documents in indicate a half a million rockets to be built by September 1945. This is an image of the U.S. Loki rocket. The rocket could be fired at an aircraft traveling at speeds up to 1,000 miles per hour. Desired accuracy equated to plus or minus 4 mils for 66% of the rounds. The major difference between the rockets is the Loki's final version was fueled by a solid propellant. In summary, it appears Germany was on the right track with the Typhoon rocket program. It was a cheap, fast, accurate rocket, which likely have been more combat effective than conventional flak artillery guns. If the Germans had just focused on this weapon instead of the multiple large, complex, guided surface-to-air weapons, the Typhoon would have been in a much better position to see service. But none entered service, so the impact on the combined bomber offensive can only be speculative. Another too little too late weapon. If you found this weapon systems review interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.